3.6. Today our objective is to multiply matrices. This is definitely more involved than adding matrices, but it's still not too bad. First we're going to see if two matrices can even be multiplied together. It turns out that you can only multiply matrices together if the number of columns on the second on the first matrix matches up with the number of rows on the second matrix. So if those numbers match up, you can multiply matrices. We'll see why in our first example. In part A, those numbers do match up. So we say yes. Turns out the dimensions are going to be the leftover numbers. In this case, 4 by 2. Part B, we see that the columns on the first and the rows on the second do not match up. So you can't even multiply these matrices together. Again, we'll see why when we see our first example. Right now you can go ahead and pause this and do the first two problems, or you can do these later. So let's talk about how to multiply matrices. You can't just multiply the A times the E and keep it simple like we did with addition. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work that way. The way it does work is, I'll use some highlighting to illustrate. We multiply the whole first row by the whole first column, and that gives us the first piece. So we go A times E, and then B times G, add them together. If we want to continue on to get the second piece over here, we need to do the top row and the second row. Notice if we were to kind of put these two matrices on top of each other, those two yellow lines would overlap and give us this piece right here. So we keep kind of doing that until we get our entire matrix filled up. We'll see that in the first example. So we're going to find A times B. Notice we're allowed to multiply these together because we've got a 2 by 2 and a 2 by 2. These numbers match up, so our answer is going to be A 2 by 2. We just have to figure out what numbers to put where. And I'll use some color coding and some highlighting to try to keep this as painless as possible. So I look at my 1, 4, and my 5, 9. I have to multiply the 1 times 5, which gives me 5, and the 4 times the 9, which is 36, and add those together. That gives me my first box. I'm going to go up and erase my highlighting and change my highlighting to first row, second column. That's going to give me a number for my first row and second column. I go 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. 4 times 6 is positive 24. Then I can go erase my highlighting again. Next I need my second row, first column. So I go to my second row, my first column, and I multiply. 5 times 3 is 15. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. And lastly, I need my second row, second column. And 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12. Just clean this up now, and I'm done. 5 and 36 makes 41. 17 negative 3, and negative 33. That's all there is to it. It's just a, you're required to pay attention to the details and be very precision-based. These are tricky, especially if you try doing too much in your head. At this point, you can pause and try these ones on your own, or you can do these later. Now for some fun ones. We got multiple steps. First, we want to figure out A times B plus C. Well, we know what A is, so we can fill that in. B plus C, we don't know yet, but we can add B and C together and get a new matrix. So let's first fill in all of these numbers. Before I even try to multiply these, I should make sure that I can. I've got a 3 by 2 
and a two by two. The middle terms match up, the two and the two. We're left with a three and a two, so this is going to be a three by two matrix. Three rows, two columns. I'll highlight for the first term, to, well, I'll highlight for a random term. Maybe not the first, maybe I want the second row, second column. So going by my numbers, that's going to give me my number that goes right here in the middle of the second column. Again, second row, second column. I'm going to multiply my negative 1 times 4 and get negative 4. I'm going to multiply by 2 times negative 3 and get negative 6. Together they make 2. That's not right. I didn't put my negative sign in on that 2 originally. So it's really negative 4 and positive 6, which makes a positive 2. You go through this process to find all of the 6 numbers in our new matrix, and then you're done. If you're having trouble getting any of these numbers, remember to figure out a specific row and column. You go to that row on the first matrix, multiply it by all of the numbers in the column of the second matrix, add those up and you get your answer. Part B is a little bit harder because we have to multiply twice and multiplying is definitely the hardest part on a matrix operation. So we've got to figure out AB times AC. First of all, let's look into what AB. Let's see if we can even multiply AB times A, a times B. A is a 3 by 2. B is a 2 by 2. Looks like it's going to work out and give us a 3 by 2. AC is going to be a 3 by 2 times a 2 by 2 also, which gives us a 3 by 2. And then if you recall, when we add matrices, we have to have the exact same dimensions on each one. We'll be adding a 3 by 2 and a 3 by 2, which is totally allowed. So I'm going to put up the numbers that you should get. I want you to try multiplying A times B on your own. See if you get the numbers that I get. Same thing with A times C. Make sure you can get those numbers right. That's definitely the hardest type of thing you're going to be doing in this lesson. If you're not getting these numbers, go back and check your addition. Once you've got these two 3 by 2 matrices, adding them together is the easier part, and you'll get your final answer. And that's it for this one. Of course, I left out a lot of steps. Steps you should be able to handle on your own. If you're not getting the same numbers as me, you can come see me. If you can't catch your own mistake. Concept summary, we just learned some properties of multiplication. Associative property, left distributive property and right distributive property, and scalar multiplication. Everything kind of works out the way you want it to, just like with real numbers. At this point, you can pause the video and try some of these on your own, or you can do these later. Last problem of this lesson, you're going to go ahead and pause the video, read over what's going on, see if you can come up with some matrices to organize this data. Looks like we're given two pieces of, two sets of information that deal with men and women's hockey. Both of these sets of information tell us something about the sticks, pucks, and uniforms. So our matrices should maybe include the sticks, the pucks, and uniforms for men and women. We know all that information. And we also know the cost of the sticks, pucks, and uniforms. The reason I'm organizing my dimensions like this, notice when I multiply these, I'm going to have a 2 by 3 and a 3 by 1. The 3's match up. And I'll end up with a 2 by 1 matrix. On top, I'll have the cost. And for the rows, I'll have the women's. I'll have the men's first. And that's exactly what I want. I want to know the cost for men and the cost for women. I don't care about the sticks, pucks, and uniforms at the end. I just want to know what the cost is. So see if you can fill in the two red boxes yourself and then multiply them 
on your own and see if you get what's in the green. Once you do have these final numbers, that tells you that the total men's team is 1530, and the total women's team is 1710. Now, maybe you caught the mistake that I made. I think I got the two numbers backwards. If I go back and switch my men and women on everything, I'll have that right. The women's ended up being cheaper than the men's. That's it. This time, notice I made a mistake. It was not too bad to fix it. I didn't have to go back and erase the whole thing. I just had to go back and precision tune it. At this point, you can pause the video, try these on your own, or you can do that later. Other than that, we are done with this lesson.